Hello, friends, and welcome to Zionville. Tragedy of tragedies. Let's bow together for a word of prayer as we begin. Our great God and our Heavenly Father, we do thank Thee today as we come together. Please be with me as I speak and be with those watching that they may understand. We've talked about this subject a lot, Lord, but it is so important. Help people today to see it where perhaps they didn't before. Help them to understand. Thank Thee in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Tragedy of Tragedies Tragedy. Our earth reeks of tragedies, worldwide and personal. We have all experienced them, some people more than others, and certainly some countries more than others. The Titanic immediately comes to mind for many. The world shared in that one. On a personal level, when I just turned 11 years old back in 1959, my mother died. That was the worst tragedy imaginable for a young boy who was never even told that she was sick unto death. She eventually died of lung cancer from smoking. She looked fine that day when I came home from school, but was dead that night. Tragedy. And this same scenario has been repeated millions of times for millions of other young boys and girls. Wars, genocides, earthquakes, starvation, poverty, betrayals, child molestation, sexual dysfunction, murders, disease, yes, the coronavirus, one way or the other. All these are tragedies, and so much more, and doubly so since it didn't have to be that way. When Adam hearkened unto the voice of his wife, Genesis 3, 17 to 19, all of his progeny on this planet from that day to this were plunged into unimaginable tragedy. 6,000 years of sin and its effects have followed just as surely as night follows day every 24 hours. There is no denying it. We are, of all planets and peoples, the most miserable. This problem does not exist anywhere else in the universe of heaven. In any case, the penalty is not lessened for that. The results of sin and death, which the Lord had warned of, began immediately for both of them. They died spiritually that day and began to die physically. They were put out of the beautiful garden in Eden that God had planted for them, thrust out into an increasingly hostile environment as conditions on the earth progressively worsened. Genesis 3, 22-24 They had to work hard for their food and everything else. Everything changed. The Lord no longer walked with them in person. Genesis 3, verse 8, clause A. Tragedy. Then the long, arduous path of our collective history began. The account of Cain and Abel, showing the right and wrong ways to approach the deity for forgiveness of sins and knowledge of how to live, ended with the earth's first murder as Cain slew his brother. Genesis 4. Then, along these two lines, Cain's and Abel's, from these brotherly progenitors uh, and Abel's replacement, Seth, the splitting of the human race into two streams, one incorrigibly evil and one walking in the path of godliness, began in Genesis 6, 1-5. to This section, by the way, is not about aliens or fallen angels cohabiting with human women. Remember the context here. It's the fall of the human race. Genesis 6, 1 to 5. Then things got worse. Tragedy. But it wasn't long before the godly line fell as well, which led to the judgment of the Noatian flood. Genesis 6, verses 6 to 8, verse 22. The two lines intermarried. Cain's and Abel's. Genesis 6, 2 something the Lord has always been against right up to our own time in the Christian era, 2 Corinthians 6, 14 and 15. Marry an unbeliever, and the believer gets leavened. It is disobedience to contract such a marriage, and tragedy nearly always follows. Millions, unfortunately, are stuck today in this kind of tragedy. In the flood, all but eight people perished, and surely there were billions then as there are today. It's the same situation now in marriage and everything else. Sin is sin, and it's a hard taskmaster. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. 
They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Luke 17, verses 26 to 30. These things are not wrong per se eating and drinking and marrying and so on, but they are all that most people think about. That is the problem, focusing on the things of this world with little or no thought to the things of God and the world to come. He will take care of us is their constant refrain, though there's truth to it too. If we're on his side, he will take care of us. But it sets in motion a very tough life that need not have happened in that way if we're not on his side. But it is what it is now, and we all just have to shift to Jesus, finally and fully, as our leader. Confess our sins, repent and make amends wherever you can, and move forward his way daily. We must be real Christians from the heart. No more my way. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothe the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye doubt of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, flock for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Luke twelve twenty seven to 32 And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Luke 12, verses 22 to 23. So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. Luke 12, 21. This is the way it is in our day, though the gospel of Jesus Christ has been preached for nearly 2,000 years. People don't listen today to what God has said to us in the prophecies of Scripture any more than people did before Christ came the first time. Not listening to what was spoken of, of in the prophecies about his first coming is dangerous. And, and all that most care about, most people care about, all they care about is their typical daily routine, making money, getting power, and what they call fun, pleasure-seeking. Far too many neglect their creator in all of this. And this applies too far to many who call themselves Christians. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. And God is not in all his thoughts. Psalm 10, verse 4. False doctrine abounds, such as once saved, always saved, to blind as many people as possible to their true condition. In Calvinistic circles, they are told they are saved. But saved from what? Many are still in their sins, even gross sins. There's no salvation there. We are supposed to be saved from our sins, not in them. Matthew 121. Satan has caused all of this, and they know it not. Tragedy. Again, remember, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, verse 33. After the flood, we saw the Tower of Babylon when God had to scatter the rebellious human race who would not, not move out across the landmass as he had commanded them. So he confused their language by instantaneously rewiring their brains in such a way that they couldn't understand each other anymore. Now, there were scores of languages. They had to split up and then into what are now the world's people groups and nations. Their speech was gibberish to themselves, one group to another. Tragedy. Christ will reverse this situation after he returns, Zephaniah 3.9. Next came Abraham, and through him 
the founding of the chosen people through which God would bring his Messiah, his Christ, the Son of God, to deal with the sin problem created in Eden, and as predicted right after the fall, Genesis 3.15. That, of course, is Jesus Christ typified by Isaac. There is none other name, Acts 4.12. The long, sad history of Israel followed. The law of God was given to Moses on Sinai. It has been ignored by people ever since, hungry for sin. Most of the kings were corrupt. Prophets brought God's message, uh, which was largely ignored, though there were some bright spots. And so the nation never fulfilled its mission to enlighten the Gentile nations round about them concerning the one true God and his Son, Proverbs 30, verse 4. And when the Son came, they slew him. Tragedy. What an awful tragedy. Yet this one worked for the salvation of the world. To all who will listen, he still does. His death on the cross of Calvary, Psalm 22, Isaiah 52, 13 through 53, 12, was for you. But do most Jews listen today? Most Gentiles? No. Tragedy. His shed blood, the fulfillment of the sanctuary types, is the only way one can find forgiveness and eternal life. To forgo it is indeed a tragedy. Rome, of course, has counterfeited it in the so-called Mass. After Christ went back to heaven, he, in spirit, accelerated the building of his church on earth, while physically also working for his people in the heavenly sanctuary. Satan resisted Jesus and his atoning work in every way he could. Martyrdom ensued on earth. Satan switched his tactics when killing people didn't stop the spread of the gospel. He joined the church and worked from within. The papacy was the result. Confusion reigned. It brought the Crusades and the Inquisition, death upon death. It also brought a slew of deadly false doctrines like the Trinity. Tragedy. The Protestant Reformation of the 16th century began to restore truth to its original luster. When it bogged down in creedalism and advanced no more, God raised up the Advent movement to finish the job. Satan has also greatly attacked it, and now the Lord is forming his final remnant from the loyal ones to bring things back to the fullness of biblical revelation they had in early Adventism and among some of the Reformers also including the teaching of the Father and Son, contra the Trinity and Tritheism. Blessings to us. I hope you know what a blessing this is to live now. The period between the Advents has been a period of nearly continuous wars, the worst of them in the 20th century, from, from which most of us uh, have become all too familiar. Today will not stop until Jesus comes. But he's coming, and soon. Hallelujah. So, friend, how is it with you, with me? As for me, I am working with the Lord with some issues I struggle with, asking for light, grace, power, and peace. This is the process of sanctification, which is an ongoing growth in holiness throughout our lifetime, from the point of our new birth to our last breath. And I trust Jesus to see me through it successfully, if I continue on to know him. Amen. Even so, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you and me will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians 1, verse 6. He has never let me down so far. I am the one who lets him down. But I've seen things change bit by bit, sometimes in traumatic ways and sometimes by just following that still, small voice in obedience quietly. He's not done with me yet, but I trust him. I hope your experience is the same. The tragedy of tragedies is to be lost. People, please remember that he is not done with you either. He wants you. Do you want him? Get with him today and stay close in your walk with him. Jesus is coming soon. Maranatha.